Well guys, um, here we are, part five of the garage reno, uh, tool room reno video. Um, not 100% sure how long this part of the uh, part five will be because it looks like we're going to get uh, stormed out. Um, I've been out here uh, working on a roof rafter. Um, I had her all uh, nice and measured out, uh, one cut, and uh, I ran into a bit of a snag. I went to go stand her up in place, and uh, she's not gonna fit in the ceiling um, where I want her to, because for order for me to get her up and over the top uh, plate there on, um, on both sides, um, she's too long. However, she's not too long because that's the size of the measurement of the span between the ceiling and the ceiling there or the roof and roof, I guess you could call her. So of course, what I done, this piece is already ruined. That was the piece that I cut. You see the, um, the angle here, right? Of course, it went right down to a, a point even further, and then I even had her notched out to fit over top of the uh, top plate there. However, like I said, she was too long. So what I done is I just lopped her off. Um, and I'm considering doing a little different of a ceiling. Um, maybe not necessarily vaulted, if you will, but it'll it'll be, um, I might in fact be able to do what I want by laying them in there, what I want, and just nailing them to the roof rafters instead of having them sitting on the top plate, they'll hang off the roof rafter, if you understand what I'm saying. Then uh, what I maybe might want to do is add a couple of bracings uh, from uh, this here um, once she's level or plumb or true, whatever you want to call hers, to, um, to there. But um, I think what I'm going to do is throw me a couple of little helper blockings up, um, up there just so I can get, um, get her in there and see where she's setting. And if she's uh, setting well, then we'll throw a couple of nails in her. But yeah, guys, not sure how far um, I'm going to get in this part of the video. Because it looks like um, a storm's brewing in by the wind. Um, I haven't looked at the forecast, but they were calling for rain. So, <laughs> of course, uh, if it's cold, the rain's going to turn into snow. So... But, um, hey, whatever it is, whatever it is, if it starts to snow, then we'll just have to pack on up, right? So, yeah, let's get at her and uh, see how she goes. Okay, guys, just a quick little check-in. Well, I got the, uh, what do you want to call it, messed up roof rafter up in there. Of course, just set in there with the help of the helper 2 by 4s um, As you see here, she is uh, not nailed in there. She's just up against the existing roof rafter. And all I'm doing is basically putting a stringer or whatever you want to call her in there. Um, the eyeball ends looks like she's level. Um, not 100% uh, certain on that, nor am I going to guarantee it. <clears throat> um, like I said, she's just uh, just setting in there. I have a shingle nail on that one that I need to deal with. Plus, I'm not 100% sure if I want to put it on this side or that side of the rafter. Of course, measuring from the back wall, um, you know, two feet or 24 inches falls uh, somewhere right in here. So regardless of whatever side I put it on, she's still going to be uh, over, over uh, not over span, but oversized for the, you know, two feet, four feet, six feet, you know, eight feet. This one here is at the five foot mark. Um, I might uh, sister that one up because it has, um, it has, um, you know, it has bowed, right? So I might sister that one up just to give it a bit more uh, strength. And of course, uh, the next one will be on the opposite side of where the wall was um, put here on this one. There's a two by four up there right now, which is one that I put up when I first did the renovation, but I'm gonna probably beef it up to a two by sixer um, one of the downsides to doing this is there's not going to be much of an attic uh, space at all up here for any type of storage. That's why I wanted to drop it because then 
um, you can kind of have a little bit of an attic space but uh, I suppose if you were really really skinny you could get up in here to pull a wire or or something like that um, what I might do for my uh, attic access what I might do is uh, um, I'm not quite sure I might not even put an attic access in um, in in every every eight feet of the garage anymore I might only do it once or or maybe not at all for for all that matters right but I'm um, gonna get out of here again guys uh, keep on trucking here she's not snowing yet we just had a bit of a, a blow-ins and uh, we'll see how she goes <clears throat> so uh, been uh, just working along here I've cut me a couple of new uh, what do you want to call them stringers rafters um, you know whatever you want to call it just uh, have them all up there already um, I was going along uh, about to throw one um, pretty much uh, right there and I realized I only had two left and of course um, I'm gonna end up putting one there and then I'll end up putting one here and uh, I figured um, I want to get this wall moved so I decided to throw one up right here so of course uh, she's up there now she's cut she's plumbed level true uh, whatever y'all want to call her um, and I've only got uh, one left now which is uh, which is over there um, way pretty much uh, down yonder there and uh, of course that's gonna be my pattern <laughs> so I so I can make um, whatever there is two or three other ones for this little um, whatever she is 10 by 12 room and of course then you get into the other part of the garage which uh, should be framed up the same way and it should be within a quarter of an inch to half inch of this side too so um, however the pattern might change as well so but I'd like to throw one here to uh, to sister this up um, in fact, I might cheat and just use a 2x4 instead of a 2x6er. But other than that, um, you know, she's going along fairly well. I still got to move this wall, pry that 2x6er off. Um, put a few more nails in that stringer there. Nail, uh, if this 2x6er comes off in one piece, which I'm hoping it should, um, I want to nail that up onto there and then we can stand the wall up in place. Uh, we'll see how she goes for the night. Um, I'd like to finish off the night uh, with replacing this uh, window and sheeting it in properly. Um, you know, being now that I have the uh, saw out and everything like that, it wouldn't take much to cut um, some of the scrappy I got to fit that hole. So, you know. But guys, I'm going to keep on going here and uh, probably keep on trucking. So guys, uh, let's throw a couple nails in that stringer there. We'll probably put, uh, I don't know, three or four more in there. And uh, just to give it extra strength. Because I guess you could call it a load-bearing uh, stringer if you want to. Because it's going to be holding the, um, the door, pretty much wall section up. So you want to make sure that uh, she's got some, uh, some nails in her, of course. <clears throat> Last thing you really want to be doing is shutting the door and having the whole uh, wall section come down with you, right? Oh, uh, well, guys, uh, there she is. The wall standing up, sort of, in its new location. Um, as you can see, I uh, changed up my plan a little. I used a 2 by 4 over the uh, uh, 2 by 6 -er, um, mainly because uh, now that I ain't dropping the ceiling, I need the um, I need the two by four for everything to line up. Of course, I'm still got to put a nailing edge up there for the roofing material to um, what do you want to call it to latch onto. But uh, she's up there um, in place, uh, not nailed in yet. I'm just about to uh, fasten it together, pretty much by running some nails right there. Um, I got to do a little bit of a repair on the section here. With all the moving and the beating around, it's kind of sprung back apart. It wasn't really meant to be installed, pulled out, installed, pulled out, moved around. You know, it kind of was meant to come in and stay there. But now, <laughs> you look at the tool room, and uh, all I can say is, wow, it makes it look bigger. 
because well it is bigger um, just to give you an example there that's where it was gonna going to be was right there and uh, this is where it is now as you can see the uh, the difference but uh, just to give you a shot now I'm uh, pretty much standing in the far back corner and I can get that whole 12 foot wall pretty much in in view but she's coming along fairly good guys like I said just about to uh, nail her together and then I've got to put the uh, um, what you call it's in here in the wall cut the vapor barrier back to um, you know get that a go as well of course I got to pull out the insulation um, other than that she's going fairly well so uh, let's get at her again and uh, see how she goes okay guys so I'm just working on getting the wall secured in place as you see here um, I've pulled pretty much all the vapor barrier now on this wall I should have done it right from the start <clears throat> Especially since I cut into it there to make a join and then I cut into it again like four feet later I should have just pulled the whole wall and we can relay it anyways But um, there she is. There's my structure. The wall is nailed in place now Of course, we still got uh, this other side here to do to get um, structure built and all that Of course again apologize for the, the lighting being a little bit poor, but hey um, It's what we got to work with right now <clears throat> So of course we'll start by uh, cutting our vapor barrier pretty much just like I uh, showed you way back in whatever it was there part one and uh, once we got our vapor barrier cut we can give her a, uh, a tug now of course she's probably going to fight you because of the acoustical sealant that's on the wall but um, sometimes you get lucky there now I'm probably going to end up pulling the vapor barrier on this whole uh, wall anyways because all I got left is a four foot section anyways so that's uh, no real big deal just allows you to lay uh, lay fresh again and start from scratch pretty much just like that so once you got the vapor barrier off you pull out your insulation again of course you guys have seen that um, two or three times over and that exposes the uh, structure that you're going to be nailing against now of course in my workshop or garage here somebody um, has sided it and of course there are siding nails poking through so you could um, take a sawzall or an angle grinder or whatever and uh, zip off these nails but I'm just going to take a hammer and and pretty much caveman method them over so I'll get those knocked over and then we can start laying in our uh, 2 by 4s here so once you got your 2 by 4 in place there you can throw some nails in there you know screws, nails, whatever you want to use whatever your weapon of choice is basically you're just fastening it to the one behind it getting it ready to accept another one <sighs> pretty much like that so of course uh, with your nail gun being you're not coming in at a straight 90 degree angle she doesn't want to put the heads all the way uh, flush so you got to do a little bit of manual labor So once you got that in there, you're ready to lay in your second 2x4. So pretty much like that. As you see there, we have the nailing edge here for the drywall, OSB, whatever to shoot, sheet this wall. And then we have the nailing edge here to sheet this wall here. So I'll throw a few nails in there guys. Get uh, this one attached to the one behind it and then we'll I'll shoot some in here and then we're pretty much uh, pretty much golden for other than the concrete nails in the floor for the um, the wall itself however I'm not going to shoot concrete nails in there yet until I get this other wall framed up because um, that's going to require a uh, specialized tool that I do not have okay guys so now we got that wall uh, pretty much fastened down you know other than the bottom plate 
Uh, we can uh, start on the next thing on my list is this window, or the old window I say. Then that way I can um, <clears throat> sheet this wall after I put a plug-in box or two in and not have to worry about... Uh, so pretty much what I'm looking to do is uh, knock out the OSB there, pry out the uh, 2x6ers, and pretty much replace this 2x6er frame with a... Um, a 2x4 frame of the same dimensions, pretty much exactly the same. Uh, and then, of course, um, studded uh, 16 on center. So uh, we can throw in some um, insulation like this, as well as, uh, as well as vapor barrier too. And then when I drop the OSB over this, it can cover the whole hole in one shot, rather than patching it with another piece and having a patch over top a patch, right? So. Um, as well as uh, for this little side room, I think the wall is probably going to end up falling right about here in the, uh, either it's going to be this side of the window frame or it's going to be right on that line anyways. So I kind of got to have, uh, got to have something there too. I can't just have a, a blank hole. But I'm going to throw you on the old tripod here guys and then we'll start uh, demo. Well guys, there you go. Just let a little bit of light into the garage. First time there's been light through that window in probably, I don't know, three, four years. But of course, um, if I remember correctly, uh, this opening's not square. The, um, when it was uh, framed, they, um, I don't know, got the opening off a bit. So I'm gonna have to frame it in in a um, semi-crooked manner, if you will, to uh, pretty much make a plug to fit this hole. As well as we have a half inch um, plywood on the outside of this garage too, and I'm using 3H uh, OSB, so I'm gonna have to compensate a bit for that. Which, uh, no real biggie, I suppose, because eventually I'm gonna siding over this window on the outside anyway. Uh, Probably like years down the road, of course, not going to be right right away. I might even cheat and uh, just reuse that piece of OSB for now because it's got to come off anyway eventually. But uh, I'm going to take some measurements here and throw them at the saw and we'll see what it cuts. Well guys, there you go. Got the window framed up um, semi-properly. She is, um, you know, good enough. I just reused the OSB uh, that was on the window uh, from previous. Um, probably should have replaced it with plywood plywood, but I don't have that um, I cut off of that plywood in my uh, collection, so I'm not about to go buy a whole sheet just for a little uh, chunk of chunk half inch or whatever. So um, it actually looks fairly good on there. It doesn't really stick out, um, really noticeable anyways. But she is more secure on there, she is better. You know, I can throw insulation in there in the vapor barrier and don't have to worry about uh, heat loss coming uh, through there or nothing. But um, let's take a look on the outside of the garage there where, where I, uh, you know, did the OSB thing out there. So of course out here, um, as you've seen, we knocked everything apart. We just, uh, I just used the old OSB, put it back up. Um, what I probably uh, should do is, uh, with my tar paper I have left over from the uh, roofing, I should put a piece of tar paper over it. Um, it'll it'll make for minimum uh, protection anyways, just to keep it from weathering even more. Eventually, yes, uh, guy should replace this with, uh, you know, half inch plywood, get everything uh, where she is. And if he really, really wanted to get uh, fancy, he could frame himself in a full window if he wants a fake looking window and put uh, put fake shutters on it just so it does, it looks better than uh, 
than OSB because you will not match um, this vinyl siding anyway anymore. And even if you could, uh, this stuff would be so chalked and faded that it would stand out like a sore thumb. But uh, now just to clean up my mess here and uh, and then pretty much um, kind of see where it leads from there. Well guys, got a bit of a check in for you. Just got things kind of semi put away and semi shut down. Just give you a rundown on what we did. Well, we had to scrap our ceiling idea with the uh, drop, if you will, um, uh, rafters or stringers or whatever you want to call us because um, they're too wide to fit up there so instead I'm going to do something pretty much what the 2x4s are but just out of 2x6 or something a little beefier I'd probably use 2x4s however you see these ones here have bowed too but they're probably already you know 50 60 years old so <laughs> and they look like they were uh, firewood to begin with but um, got this wall section moved, and boy does it make the tool room uh, look bigger, um, which it is, of course, four feet. Whatever four by 12 is in terms of uh, square footage wise it added to this room. Got the uh, old window uh, framed in properly rather than just a chunk of plywood over the hole. Um, probably, like I said, I'll end up um, vapor burying and uh, plasting I'll probably end up insulating this and uh, vapor burying this and uh, using up some of this insulation I have, um, you know, pulled out of this wall and stuff. Use that up rather than buying new stuff. Uh, pretty much uh, in part six, I see us making a trip to the lumber yard. I'm not sure if that'll be a feature in part six or just uh, something I'll do on the sideline and then kind of like poof, you know, there we go. We need lumber and we got it kind of a deal. But guys, all in all, uh, the day went fairly well. Of course, you kind of got to think on your feet when it comes time to uh, doing projects and stuff because nothing ever seems to go the way you think they should. But I'm pretty much all cleaned up for the night. Probably going to shut her down here because, well, I uh, can't do much until I get more wood and all the lumber stores are pretty much closed. So as always, thanks for watching Maxwell's World. Comment, subscribe, and enjoy.